Hello and welcome to another Maps video tutorial. Today I will be talking about Adobe InDesign CS3 and covering the very basics of how to create a document and put elements on that document like text, images, colour and graphical elements. And to do that I am going to mimic this page on the right here. When you open Adobe InDesign, go to File, New, select Document. And this is where we'll set up the dimensions of our page. You can enter in how many pages you'd want here. Then you've got a couple of presets for your paper size. I'm going to be working in an A4 paper size today, so I can select that one. But if you want, you can enter these dimensions in manually. Now you can see that that unit of measurement that we're looking at here is denoted by a letter P, and that stands for peakers. If you don't work in peakers, don't worry, because Adobe will convert whatever you want into peakers for you. So if you wanted a width of 297 millimeters, oops, just make sure you type in 297, and you can see when I click out of that, it's converted that to peakers for us. I'm going to go back to A4. Next, um, you can add some columns. I'm not going to add any here even though, as you can see, my page has three columns. I'm going to add them in myself. I just like the flexibility of it, but that's entirely up to you. Next, you can define how big you'd like your margins to be. And the margin is the distance between the stuff on your page here and the edge of your paper there. So there's my margin for the left. If you don't want your margins to be the same size, Make sure you uncheck this little chain icon here. So I'm going to have a top margin of 15 millimeters. Same with the bottom. My inside, I'm going to make 12 millimeters, and my outside, I'll make 13. Next, we have bleed and slug. And if you can't see these options, you'll need to look for a button up here that says more options. And that will show you the bleed and slug fields. So, what's a bleed? I'm not going to go into too much detail, but basically, a bleed will give us this effect where the picture looks as though it's running right off the edge of the paper there. So, basically, there was a margin originally. Uh, kind of outside the edge of the paper and this picture ran right up to that margin and then when it was printed the printer cut off some of that excess and made the picture look as though it ran right off the edge of the page and that's what we can do with a bleed margin. So bleed margins are usually around three or four millimeters I'm going to stick with three and I can leave that link, um, that chain icon ticked because I do want it to all be the same and then hit OK. So here's what our document looks like. We've got a couple of different colored lines. We've got a pink and purple line. And that's kind of the bounding box for all of our stuff. Here is the edge of your paper. It's black. So that means the space in between the pink and purple line and the black line, that's your margin. And this red line here, that is your bleed margin. So anything that we'd like to bleed off the page, we make sure it sits right up to that red margin. You'll want to know how to get around your page too, so to zoom in and out, hold the Alt key down on your keyboard and use the scroll wheel on your mouse to zoom in and out. It's by far the most easy way to get around your page. Um, you can also hold the space bar down and drag your page around, which is very handy if you're doing stuff very close up. We have the toolbar on the left here, and when we select the tool, up the top we'll see options or settings that relate to that tool. So right now I see options for my selection tool. Now I see options for my type tool. We have the exact same options in these tool panes on the right here. So if you can't see an option you need at the top, don't fret. It's probably down here on the right. Next we're going to add some grid lines to our page. And to do that we need to use the rulers. But right now they're still in that unit of measurement called peakers that I was explaining before, so we need to change that. You just need to right click in the ruler, 
and select the unit of measurement that you're working in and I'm working in millimetres. Do that to both rulers. So guides help us to break up our page so we know exactly where everything's going. So I'm going to be putting guides that mean this page obviously so I'm going to have a guide under the picture here um, another horizontal one under the subheading, another one under the heading and I'll also have vertical ones on either side of the columns to help me know exactly where they're going. So to put a guideline on the page, once you've got your rulers in the right unit of measurement, you just need to click inside the space of your ruler and drag down onto the page and you can see now I've got a blue line there. You can also make a vertical line by doing the same thing in the other ruler. So I'm going to go ahead and put all of my guides on the page so you can see how it works. So I've finished putting my grid lines on and hopefully you can see roughly where everything is going to go. I've got my main heading fitting in these two boxes, subheading down in these two, first column fitting over these three, second and third column in these two, and my picture is going in this larger space. So now we're ready to put some elements on the page and we're going to start with text.